Okay, so let's get started for today. Um, to get started with some announcements, um, to submit your work for critique hours, so like how do I get my stuff on your videos, um, you just go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon right here. <clears throat> and this is where we post everything. This is where everything goes. So uh, all community challenges, pins, all of that stuff. So please do join the subreddit um, if you can. And for my patrons, I know you guys are waiting for your rewards, but my voice only today is sounding like acceptable. So please, um, you know, just hold tight and uh, I'll send out those rewards soon because I have to reward, I uh, have to uh, record the commentary and my voice has not sounded very good. So uh, I'm waiting for it to sound a little bit better because these videos are going to last forever in my channel. So I want them to sound crisp and clear. Um, and uh, there's, it's like a 45 minute process video. So that's a 45 minutes of talking which I, uh, you know, it was not very easy for me to do. So uh, I will send out the, uh, the rewards very, very soon for uh, uh, September. Just, uh, just hang tight. Um, and uh, Portrait Studio is still on sale. It will be on sale for a while. The sale will go off for about a month or two, and then the winter sale will start. It'll be cheaper than it is at the moment. Um, and the classes that I told you guys about, the specialty classes that I will be uploading onto my store that you can buy, um, uh, mostly like focused, uh, uh, eye study, nose study, mouth study, everything that goes into any individual feature will be uploaded on my website for purchase. It's a little different from what you see on my community, um, just because it's, it's focused, it's specialized, and it's everything that I would have taught in private tutoring, obviously, but it's a recording. It's not one-on-one -on -one live calls which is why private tutoring is more expensive. It's tailored specifically to you, but for anyone who wants to venture into the 14 day challenge and kind of push their RI skills, their, their portraiture skills to the absolute max, um, uh, I will be running, I will be uh, uploading uh, classes on my store very soon. Again, it's just all pending on uh, whether or not I finally stop being sick. I think I've been sick for, a month now I'm not sure why I think it's the changing weather and um, I, I really don't know what I picked up and where uh, but uh, but I'm pretty sure it's the Delta variant because I was pretty sick um, and uh, and patreon so for those who are learning from my community I've been teaching since 2012 uh, 2013 on YouTube and 2012 uh, I started on live stream uh, dot com. Um, and uh, I've been doing this for a really long time and it's always been for free. Uh, but I do um, have an avenue for support if anyone wants to submit, I mean, um, join as, as a patron to help keep the community alive. You can join as a just $1 a month patron. So if everybody on Patreon um, was only a dollar from our, our Reddit, um, you know, that would be more than enough to keep the community running for a really long time, uh, unencumbered by any uh, uh, rules or, or anything like that, that working with marketing or anything, agencies that help get my views up and, uh, you know, policing my video length, all of that, that crap. I, I would never work with them. I would never reduce my video length. Um, and I want to do this forever. I mean, I see myself being 50 years old and still doing critique art. Uh, so it means the world to me when you guys um, uh, help support the channel that way because it is in need. It's just, it's it's very suppressed. YouTube has kind of put my channel um, in, in a list of those like damned channels because the videos are too long and they're not ad friendly and they're just so niche um, that there's nothing they could really do for my channel because they're trying to make money because that's all they care about. So um, they don't really believe in that teach for teaching sake and teach for posterity and pro bono YouTube doesn't work like that it wouldn't it wouldn't promote a channel like mine that teaches for free you know um and it's university level specialty uh tutorials like it's not like I'm teaching how to do origami or something like that like I'm teaching an entire craft an entirely an entire scholarly pursuit so uh so uh, you know again it's not ad friendly and uh, my channel, like at the moment, I used to have 100 viewers per stream. Now I have 17 viewers average per stream. I have no idea what's happening to the channel. 
Um, and I hope it's just a, you know, a, a downtrend, but I have a feeling it's not. Because why would they suddenly decide to throw ads towards uh, popular channels? Why would they flood uh, my subscribers' walls with my videos instead of short videos that'll send them ads? Um, so I've kind of just given up trying to, uh, you know, work with YouTube. I will never shrink my videos and, um, I may upload clips of my processes and stuff like that, but that'll, that's pretty much where it stops. <clears throat> so if you want to support on Patreon, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so because I'm not feeling too great today, um, I will only be, basically, I'm just going to be aiming my rendering skills at this portrait and just seeing what happens. Um, and talking about the things that I'm doing. There's no particular big before and after I'm aiming for or any fundamental uh, topic I need to display or exhibit. It's really uh, strictly about aiming my rendering skills at this and talking about how to push this piece further. Um, hey, origami is hard. Don't knock it till you try it. I know I'm not trying to like bash origami. I'm saying it's not just like a craft, you know, a, you know, an optional craft or something. I'm, I was teaching, I'm talking about academia, basically. It's not just like arts and crafts where you just throw it into the pile of arts and crafts stuff like origami. What I'm, what I'm teaching is sciences and visual art and cinema. It's, it's an entire topic. It's an entire academic topic. Um, so for this piece, uh, there's a lot wrong with it, obviously. It's very washed out. There's no contrast. There's no light environment. There's nothing going on. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I want to show off um, the, uh, the portrait corrections first, I'm, I won't darken it into the light environment I'm seeing in my mind, which is a silhouette, as you might have predicted, because I love those. Um, but, uh, but again, I'm just pushing this portrait to the max and seeing what comes out. I don't know if this is a hat. I can't tell. Maybe it is. Maybe it is a hat. It's actually really um, annoying and I, and I just want to get rid of it um, because it's just a big circle and it's killing her silhouette. So all we're really seeing, the thing is with silhouettes is that your eyes see the face, but your brain sees the circle. All right, so what do you think I mean when I say that? Can anyone describe the, di the difference between our eyes seeing something and our brain seeing something? Um, so this big circle is in the way, and it's not really a, a composition. It's just such a perfect circle. It's almost eerily perfect. It's not really helping the scene in any way, I don't think. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And again, I don't. Uh, that's, this is not about what the artist intended. This is just me aiming my rendering skills and my expertise on, uh, on this piece. It's not in any particular direction, and I'm not really trying to honor what the student did or anything like that. It's just for the sake of uh, uh, you know, teaching what I know. So yeah, I sound amazing compared to yesterday. Yesterday, I couldn't get one word out without half the sound coming through. So like every word was half its sound, um, which was really bad. All right, so you still have lines here and uh, they're pretty bad. So let me put my smart lady crown on, which are my glasses. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just try to blend out and we'll weigh some of your lines. So uh, let's start with the eyebrows. And I just want the eyebrows to feel natural. And so to do that, I'm smudging away the lower part. And I'm smudging away the upper part. So I'm not going to try to change who she is. Like, I'm not going to change her asymmetry. These are people who look like this. Um, it's mostly just for making it feel organic, making it feel natural. And then for the eyes, I'm going to start blocking in with soft brush just because I want to rush the process along. Remember, I'm using soft brush because it will quickly do the job. But for you guys, I really recommend um, you block this stuff in early on. So I'm adding that eye socket shadow there.
and it's really simple shadows and again when you when it comes to portraiture and you feel lost you feel like you don't know what to put and where you don't know what to apply um it comes from habit building so a lot of this stuff is muscle memory one thing i've been teaching my private students is that a lot of the knowledge you learn in class right now is stuff that right now is just verbal knowledge it's not really knowledge that'll come through um uh, 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 you know, right away in your skill set. It's knowledge that at the moment is only strictly knowledge that you could call, you know, for an answer. You could quickly answer a question like, what are the edges and what's this? When knowledge becomes part of the back, um, part of your brain, unintentional kind of uh, stream of skill that comes through as you paint, that comes from the mileage you apply and how many mistakes you've made and how many times you've fixed it, that your brain woke up to these changes, that your brain is like, damn, this is a skill that this this person wants to keep using. I have to build special pathways for all of these skills. So verbal knowledge is not the same as applied knowledge, applied knowledge or active knowledge or a skill set that's believable. Um, just because you've read books does not mean you're going to get better. Just because you... Um, uh, have watched a bunch of, you know, talks or downloaded a bunch of Gumroad tutorials or spent years with the logistics of it all does not mean you're a better artist. Uh, what makes you a better artist is being so active with the painting process that you are building the real skill that if you're sitting here lecturing and talking, your brain can still render while you're just talking about a completely different topic. So I'm rendering right now based off a like set of pathways that my brain has now been accustomed to providing me with, you know, providing information with, you know, providing the action, everything through. So, you know, while talking about a completely different topic. So that's what you, that's real knowledge. That's the real skill set. And so, uh, you know, knowing what to do with my edges here, knowing where to stop an edge, where to build an edge, um, where to apply contrast, all comes from that, that kind of, low hum of knowledge that that comes from mileage it's pretty abstract you know this this whole thing i just discussed it's a pretty abstract notion it's it's not really you can't really point to any part of your brain that's responsible for your art skill um it comes from all kinds of things it comes from a uh, basic habit building part of your brain to the memory part of your brain to the actual visual and um and uh, creative part of your brain and also uses a great deal of symmetry and math and all of that and uh, memorization and information and from the more you know logical or mathematical part of your brain so it's it's you're using all the faculties of your knowledge gathering information that your brain can do for any human being to develop this skill and uh, you have to be present that's why homework for my classes is so important I, I, I give a lot of homework. I'm one of those teachers that always gives out homework. So I'm just uh, reblocking the nose really quickly and I lighten the size of the nose so it doesn't contest or value share with the eye sockets. And uh, I darken the eyes, but I also still, I mean, it's, I want to keep your style in the style that you know the style of face or the style of person but i still want her to have like an actual sphere for the pupil and the iris but i'm gonna like keep her mouth the same size etc <clears throat> Yeah, transferring knowledge from my brain uh, to the canvas is my biggest hurdle right now. And and the best way to, the thing is that comes with it is that you, uh, you suddenly have all this confidence when enough time has passed and your brain has processed the process of painting. Your brain has like come to terms with it. Sometimes all you have to do is introduce a topic to your brain, give it a couple days and all of a sudden you wake up on the third or fourth day and you're like, damn, that's so much easier than I remember it being. Because your brain figured it out. It wasn't a clunky initial step-by-step -step process. You kind of got used to the idea. 
um, and your brain is, you know, well aware of its responsibility for performing this task. So, you know, the way to do that is the brain is kind of a, a stubborn, stubborn mule sometimes. And the best way to do it is to encourage it through consistent practice. I mean, they weren't lying when they say practice makes perfect. So I added some light on the water line here, I'm adding a little bit of extra pigment. And I really want to push this uh, rendering as far as I can. Homework shows commitment. Yes, it does. All right, and now I'm just adding a little bit more pigment, a little bit more blocking here and there. So darker for the eyebrows, just now that I see where everything is, and a little bit of a block for the light in the eye. So you had pretty light eyes. And for me, I try to manage the shadow of the eyes before I choose their color. I'm going to add a bit more contrast and along the water line, anywhere where the light might have caught some pools of water here and there on the eyes, and a bit of that sheen of the upper eyelid, just a simple little block that I'll blend in. Not too much because the sheen is supposed to stay um, pretty blocky. All right. I'm going to strengthen the contrast here and then for the lips really the lips are the most um, underdone part here because you, you have none of the key things that make a portrait a, a lips look realistic in a portrait so you have none of the radial shading on the side and none of the cylinder shadows um, so the upper half of the lower lip needs a light and the lower half needs a shadow because we're basically just rendering a cylinder in space at the moment and then the same thing with the upper lip. The lower half has shadow, the upper half has light. You're basically just making it look like the face and the mouth are from the same, you know, from the same material realm. They're not separate from each other. They're not overly, it's not a sticker. They are the same object. They share the same matter, which is the body. And I'm blending around. Again, just trying to marry the shape of the mouth with the, or the basic structure of the mouth with the face. So the artist that posted this on the Reddit, what they said was um, that, you know, they've been studying for a little while now and they want, the, you know, the critique to be a gentle critique. Um, so I'm trying to be gentle just so I don't discourage you or scare you off, uh, but uh, it's not really always been my style. Of course, sometimes I'm a bit harsh, um, but, uh, but I think it's good harsh. But um, I hope that talk just now about skill being something that isn't, isn't verbal, isn't strictly verbal, I hope that kind of gets through because uh, you need a lot more studying mileage. So yeah, you've been at this for four years. I don't know what you've been doing in that four years, but uh, you know, for my students, uh, they improve in a couple months just because what the kind of work we do is all based on the fundamentals. So what I would diagnose for you is that you have a lot of work left with your form studies. I mean, you need to get on those ASAP because, and I'm trying to do this, say it in a really nice way, but you got no shape skills at all. Um, you don't know a cylinder when you're looking at one. The nose was understructured. You didn't see the edges of the nose. You're kind of just building and painting out of this um, really topical, line-dependent, general mirage of knowledge that you may have in your mind. It's not really like a real dependable skill set. It's, 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 it's something very, that you feel like you, you, you grasp sometimes. It's always out of reach. Do you feel that when you're painting? You feel like art is something that at best is always accidental. It's not something you can call on. It's a muse that visits you and flutters away like hee hee, flutters away. And, and you know, until it visits you again and then you feel like drawing again. It's not something that you have reign or control over. When you get that sensation, when you feel like art, your art, it doesn't feel like you have control over it. That is, is, is accredited to simply bad form study knowledge. I mean, you don't have uh, it, it is also to do with inspiration and all that BS and that has to do with mental health and whether or not you're feeling up to it and all that and burnout. Um, 
but most of the time, most of the time, it's that you don't know how to, you just don't have a good control. You don't have command over the, 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 the cubes, the spheres, the cylinders, the light, uh, the whole physical situation of having a three-dimensional world exist within two dimensions. You just, you just don't have command over that. So when you're working with a reference, it doesn't work. When you're painting without reference, it doesn't work because the basic building blocks are not that you don't speak the language. So you're trying to write an essay in German and you don't even know the German alphabet. Like, how are you going to do that? It's going to look and sound bad. It's going to be weird because, yeah, you may have, you know, borrowed from this essay and you may have heard this phrase, but at the end of the day, the essay still sounds like it was written by a non-native, you know, non-German speaker. Like it's, or not, no, not, doesn't even speak German, you know, not non-German speaker. Completely doesn't know the language. What is that? If not, you know, exactly what you guys are doing with art. You guys are trying to paint entire scenes, people, creations, um, uh, and you have none of the building blocks in your vocabulary at all. So what did you think your brain was going to do? What did you think your brain was going to do when you presented it with a picture or a photo that you liked? And you could just, you just could not pull off the anatomy on top of the symmetry on top of the form and light and, and, and all of that stuff combined. So when I, when I list out fundamentals, some of you get frustrated because you're like, there's so many to learn. Honestly, you can count them with your hand. There's not that many. There's form, there's understanding what light does, and there's anatomy. That's it. Like, honestly, that's really it. Um, and, uh, if, if you, and they all come hand in hand. They all happen at the same time on a portrait. So that's why we want to study portraits first, because everything that can happen will happen on a portrait. So right now I'm just trying to build the eye socket shadow along with the hairline and then I'm just going to finish it off um, by lowering the shadows down slowly and gradually on the lower half of the face. So the face feels like it's in top down light just based off that nose shadow. So I picked the light source. I changed the light source. I picked it to come from light coming from above. And... Um, I'm just going to work on the mouth a little bit more. Have you flipped it yet? Not yet. Your theory on studying has really given me a lot to think about. Good. And in art, the, beauty, the beautiful thing about fundamentals is they can be divorced from uh, creativity. That's a lot. That's a big thing that slows you guys down when you're trying to improve. So you, your creativity is a hindrance to your improvement. Isn't that terrible? I mean, it's, it's kind of a trap because you don't really know what the hell I'm supposed to do. What am I supposed to do then? So you have a lot of self-policing that you have to do in order to jump out of that pressure to be creative every single time you paint. Every single time you hold a pen and you're on your tablet or you have your pencil and your sketchbook, that it's creativity time. That's insane. That's an insane thing to put your brain through, the pressure to put yourself through, because then if you're not performing that day, oh, you've lost your identity as an artist. So you guys have to make peace with the fact that at one point or another, your mileage is just not enough. And you're going to have to stop, drop, <laughs> and do some form study. All right, because it's 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 basic language, it's basic arithmetic, like it's it's the basics of 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 this field. You have to get them done. The only way I know what I'm doing with the mouth is because I have anatomy experience with the with the portrait, because I paint like seven portraits a day for classes, um, you know, since 2013. But it's not that you have, it's going to take you that long to catch up with me. You can learn, the brain, human brain can develop a habit in 21 days or something. Uh, so you can develop, use habit power to your advantage, your brain's habit building power to your advantage. And you can develop a habit, habit knowledge, as well as real knowledge um, that you can call on, as well as, you know, adding to your verbal knowledge of, of art. Um, and again, I, I, I separate the definition of verbal knowledge from 
uh, active knowledge, you know, while you're painting, you're painting well. It's not the same as talking about painting well. It's, it's two different, different parts of your brain. Verbal knowledge is great for, let's say, me when I'm teaching you guys. I'm teaching you what the action is. But this action as I teach it is different, comes from a different part of my brain than when I'm actually painting the action. So it's good to have, you know, a verbal awareness of what it is you're doing, not just paint. There's a lot of artists you may have seen that paint really well, but ask them to explain something. They have no idea what the hell to say. So it's good to have that verbal knowledge, you know, and take some classes, memorize the vocabulary and the terminology and all that. But the best knowledge comes from working with form studies. It gives you that, that, uh, that, I don't know what to call it, you know, that knowledge that sits in the back of your brain, that's real active skill. That's just, you don't know how to paint a bad thing if you tried because your brain is so <coughs> finely tuned with performing, you know, a, a sphere in light. It's just, it's pure knowledge. It's knowledge at its purest when you, when you build that, 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 combination of habit and skill you know what is skill really how do you call it what do you call it like what is skill at the end of the day so i'm building the the, the upper eyelid light i'm going to keep her looking down because it's kind of adding to that aesthetic and i'm continuing the contrast around the mouth and then what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to start thinking about the uh, the form. So uh, the, the general idea, the light environment, all of that. Um, so this object and light, what's it going to do? Is basically another question you learn if you do form studies. You study objects and the background's relationship with the object. Um, so what is the background's relationship with this portrait? So there's a lot of stuff you have to consider. Um, when you add narrative, so she seems, you know, she's depressed or she's looking down or she's thinking or she's about to make a create a, a, a big choice, something like that. Something's going on with her. So what I'm going to do is think as like a cinematic uh, uh, framing and, a, you know, a moment of great cinematic impact for this character. So I'm darkening this. And brightening the, the outside. So I'm thinking in both as a form and the narrative impact of a silhouette. And so a silhouette, in order to read as a silhouette, really has to be pushed. Okay, and this is just one of the versions I'll do. And then that light is coming in. quite a bit, so I'm just going to boost that light up. And remember those different lighting setups that I showed you guys a while back. So I'm just working like that, trying to decide what the narrative strength is to this character. And then, you know, just thinking about the fundamentals of cinema. You don't have to learn the fundamentals of cinema right away if you're, uh, if, if you're, you know, illustrating. You can, you can use some really basic setups. But uh, the silhouette and all that drama is just something I decided to use today. So I'm just applying any one of those that I know to this piece. A little bit of subsurface out here. And then the ears. And then I'll erase with a soft brush for the rest, actually. So the side of the cheeks are getting some light. I'm just creating a terminator line over here keeping this edges these edges tapered just duplicating that layer okay and in order for this to work we really do have to darken her face quite a bit so this is just me adding that little bit of drama and pushing this piece a little bit further it's raining right now where I am, so you might hear that. I'm using a, a new sound setting Abu set me up with. Um, NVIDIA sound something. Um, so I might sound a little bit better, actually, than usual today. Even though my voice doesn't sound great, my sound should sound great. 
And I'm just boosting up this light on the side of her face. I'm just trying to create that close up tension, high emotion, um, dramatic lighting, just working with, with it. Damn, it's really pouring out. Um, if I get cut, uh, I'll, I'll just hang tight. I'll be right back. Oops. So a little bit on the neck, just a touch, not too much. And then the shadow of the collar. And a little bit on this side as well. And the shadow of this collar. All right, so this lighting really took it, you know, took it somewhere else because we brought in the secondary light. It took away that contrast of the Terminator, um, uh, but uh, but it, you can still have leftover core shadow here that can really come through and bring that contrast back. So you can see we have still left so left some um, we can use. Alright, and then I'm just going to jump back to the, actually before I do that, let me keep the softness because I might just redeem some of that by exaggerating the contrast a little bit more. So, darkening her and uh, just bringing in more drama. So, uh, do this first. Really pushing that white way up. And then select inverse. And then just darkening the character a little bit more. And you can see how strong that, that side view light, uh, that the, the, the secondary light is. It's just the primary, but it's just like a diffuse light coming in. Right, so those are the two realms that you had a lot of issues with. You had no real staging, there was no real story. It was just a sad character in a super washed out scene. And um, so let me just do that before I lose everything. And, uh, and then you had no anatomy, you had no real uh, uh, rendering. There was nothing that felt fleshed out. There were no shadows, there was nothing that was really happening. So this is me just applying basic um, rendering skills to this. Um, it's it's uh, There's a lot more that you could do. Background also doesn't have to be pure white. You can still maintain some degree of, of uh, silhouette with a background that isn't that super dark. And there's much more to be done. You can render out the ears. You can you can bring in some kind of rescue light that'll that'll help bring out the face a little bit. So what I'm gonna do because I darkened her face a great deal, I have to defuse her nose shadow because there's no more direct light on her nose on her face. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have to defuse that, and then I'm just gonna bring in a some kind of sheen that catches a little bit of that ambient light hanging out somewhere. So a little bit on her cupid's bow, on her nose, moving up in this way. So it's really just the highlighters, just the moment where we get a little bit of wetness before this character decides to do something. Just a little bit of dew or or, or, uh, or sweat hanging out, catching some light, bringing out, pulling that face out of the shadow. But I'm not completely using a big, I'm not using big brushes, I'm not using any any great changes um, to the value range of this silhouette because I need to keep that intact in order for it to continue reading as a silhouette. So this is where that active knowledge meets that verbal knowledge, is that my verbal knowledge, and again, these are just temporary terms that I'm using. I'm not sure you know what to call them or what they're called, you know, uh, by, by 
brain experts and neurologists what what it is that that where we store that kind of verbal direct um, knowledge that just is always at the forefront versus the back burner knowledge but this is where that meets so me knowing not to lighten things anymore on the face because then I'll just corrupt the silhouette is is that verbal knowledge meeting the habit knowledge which is my visual instinct is telling me um, you know keep it dark because it's not looking right when it's not dark so where, where with you guys do you have this, these two types of knowledge fighting each other? And uh, have you noticed that, you know, and you're really great at reading, you know, information back. Some of my students, I'm teaching them and I'm asking, okay, what are the different types of edges? What, what's the issue here? You know, I'll give them a clue as to what the answer is. And I do random pop quizzes in class and they'll answer it perfectly, but their work doesn't reflect any of that skill. And that's because um, it's not active knowledge. It's not skill. It's just uh, facts that they're spitting back out. And so in order to be you know, a good teacher, you have to know when your students have that fake knowledge, I call it, uh, for you know, lack of better term. Obviously, as you can see, I am lacking better terms all day. But, um, but yeah. Uh, that's why I call it fake knowledge because it doesn't really serve you to paint a better painting. Real knowledge, real skill serves you. And though it's it's a good, you know, it's it's it's, it's knowledge, knowledge is knowledge, but I, for the sake of creating a painting, it's not enough. It's artificial. It feels artificial. There are little hairs sometimes that hang out on the ears. I'm going to try to catch some of that in here, and then I'll do the same thing for the hair. And then there's the uh, the glare, which is also very important, which is just that silhouette coming through. The actual texture of the light source beaming through. It's turning into a very solemn piece, very sad. Um, and then other staging qualities I could add are, uh, oh, okay, so, oops, just that little overhang of shadow. And that's just another cinematic cue for, for you know, something dramatic happening or something not necessarily uh, good or, you know, anything of the sort. So I'm putting... Oh, I must have merged it down. The highlighter of the face, so I need to, I wish I didn't merge it down, because I need to make sure it stays bright. So I'm deleting some of that wherever I put it in around the face. Because the highlighter will fight that overhang shadow coming from the top. All right. And I'm um, thinking they're feeling a bit dim. I don't think they are as uh, bright as they could be. Um, but, you know, it's moving in the right direction now. Um, we have a bit more of the character here. And then, you know, some things, other things we could add are just wool breaking moments that we could afford. Um, just like a specular highlight here and here. Um, you know, sometimes you don't have to have specular highlights hanging out right on the pupil in the iris. They can be hanging out outside of it. I'm actually surprised by how good honey works to your, for your throat. That's amazing. I didn't struggle at all like I did yesterday. And... You can move this here, you can move it towards the lower half of the eyes, which I think is a bit is a bit more realistic because the light is coming from beneath her face, stuff like that. And I'm gonna boost the contrast just a little bit more. And then see about the hair. So So the hair could use a bit more encouragement. It's not gonna work. Um, Mid-tones, just to show how the light is coming through. Son of a bitch. Okay. 
one. Hmm. All right, so I flattened here. So there we go. Um, so I need access to the layer, my bad. So select inverse, and I'm just going to be encouraging the hair to like have this silhouette. Am I still selected? Yes, I am. So, but I also have some subsurface, like the hair is just right on the outsides of the hair. There's a little bit of light coming through it. And then another cinematic uh, trick you could use is just blur. So filter, blur, because it's such a close-up shot. It's, we're so close up to the character, the camera almost feels like it's uh, forced you know, very close and then the focus is thrown off. So, so a little bit of a blur goes a long way um, to help bring the, the canvas back in. Um, I'm not sure what happened to the sides, but a lot of realism, a lot of depth happening. And uh, one thing I want to do is right outside of the character, But none of this would really be easy to do um, if you didn't have a decent looking portrait. If the portrait didn't look decent enough, then um, you know, then you wouldn't have anything to apply all these tricks to. So don't think that it's just about tricks that make this uh, that make this work. Oh, I see what happened. a little bit of extra light behind her just to show where that that main light is coming from so yeah I taught you a lot of cute little tricks here and there about making things look a little bit more appealing in a canvas all these little glares and all these uh, silhouettes and stuff but it's not really what makes a painting look good he made honey tea because of my influence um, uh, so, uh, so I was wondering if you would do a paid video lesson on form studies or would it just be portrait elements? I have done so many videos on form studies on my channel that, you know, I don't feel like I have anything left to cover. Whereas with portraits, you know, that it's just, everything is always changing from face to face. So that's why I think I would need a specialty class just for that, for the paid classes, but it might be something I'll consider in the future. Yeah, it reminds me of Prometheus too. I, I totally see that. Um, any questions at all? Just found your channel about a week ago. I still use reference and haven't started the 14 day challenge, but my paintings look so much more 3D than before. You're insane. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. I'm happy my channel is helping. Yeah. Uh, so is drawing freely advised against if one is beginning drawing freely? Um, no, no, you can draw as much as you would have had you not met my channel, but add to your regimen, your daily creativity, quote unquote, regimen, um, form studies and uh, understanding shapes and open suspended space, suspended and open space. Because if you don't know how that works if you don't know the mechanics and the physics of why a shape looks the way it does in open space you will not be able to bring that back to your creative endeavors because and only because we don't have three dimensions we have to fake three dimensions this is not a cube this is not a cube this is an illusion. It's an artificial cube. It's just me pretending there's a cube because I added the z-axis. So we have x and y, which is all we have in a flat painting and all we ever had in a canvas or a sketchbook. I can only go side to side or up and down. What makes something look three-dimensional even though we don't have three dimensions? It's that z-axis, the artificial third dimension. It's fake. So if you know how to paint a, a, a pyramid, you know, and stop seeing a square, start seeing a cube, stop seeing a triangle, start seeing a pyramid, 
a cylinder, uh, a sphere, and all kinds of lighting. That means that any culmination of these shapes, you could also render them, and any culmination of these shapes in a reference, you could read it and bring it back to your canvas. That is how to draw. How to draw is just fake the third dimension good. That's all it means. So when you start adding these form studies, basic shapes, understanding light, understanding shadow, different types of uh, lighting scenarios, silhouettes, etc., all that biz, um, you'll be able to uh, 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 just see a, dra a massive change in your work. There's unbelievable change in your work, first of all. And then from there, you know, you, 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 you perfect your anatomy and perfect your blending and edge work and technique a little bit, be a little bit more confident with your brush strokes. You're an artist. <laughs> You're a pro. Um, it doesn't take a lot physically to learn how to draw well. The only thing that's hard is mentally. It, it's, you, it's hard to make a, a human being, these stubborn fleshlings, sit down and focus on something long enough. Because we've got all these other issues that we have to fight through and all these other habits. Our art is not hard, all right? It only needs a little bit of discipline. Why? Because us, by default, are very undisciplined creatures. We like immediate gratification because we're a survival peoples, which means that we don't believe in the concept of time. We only believe in what's in front of us. We are creatures of the present, which is actually how to find a lot of inner peace. Because if you stop thinking about the world as a time structure, you can actually start finding some inner peace in your life and enjoy your life a little bit. But apart from, except for art, <laughs> except for art. Um, so basically, and even then, even then, you know, you can't speed up your improvement, um, you know, by, by thinking about how you need to think about the future and whatever, but, and how, you know, gratification isn't now, gratification may be delayed. Um, warning, gratification may be delayed when working in art. So don't give up on it, you, you fleshling. Um, quote me on that. <laughs> uh, but what you need to do is believe that you know, even though your form studies today might be sucky, you know, okay, so fine, Mr. Brack, I'm going to do these form studies, but, you know, when are they going to start looking good? Because I still have 70 more form studies to do before I'm even good at cylinders or whatever. Um, when do I get good? First of all, it, I, I, on average, from what I've seen from my students, it takes like, what, 10 cylinders to learn what a cylinder does in light? 10 paintings of a cylinder, 10. Just 10. Like, I honestly, I don't, I, I don't, um, prescribe any more than that really for a student who's just starting um i give them 10 cylinders to do and um three or four of them are in different lighting and i repeat that assignment over and over and you know if, if they if it really doesn't click and i refuse to believe uh, you know and cylinders just will not click for any one type of student they do you know 50 spheres because spheres are related to organic patterns um, some suspended organic form studies, uh, lots of polygonal cubes, and all of a sudden, the, the, you know, they start seeing that it was never about the blending or copying tutorials on Instagram or whatever, or getting the best brush or owning Procreate or an iPad or something. It was just about seeing a core shadow where there was one where you needed one. So the illusion of an artist goes down and the real humility of actually, it's not humility because it's actually a really prideful moment for when, a, when an artist starts to, you know, becomes a sculptor. Um, so it's, it's not humility. It's just like you find a newfound respect. You find out exactly what, what it really took to become good at art after those form study regimens, after that form study regimen. So it's, it's, life-changing students tell me they start seeing cubes everywhere they start understanding things they're just looking at they'll be outside or in their kitchen and they'll be like i'm just seeing cubes i'm rendering and i'm not even on a painting i'm just i can render everything around me that's what i mean when i say that you know that the gratification thing it, just because your paintings don't look great right away does not mean you haven't changed your brain that you have changed your brain a great deal your brain is changing just by doing form studies, you're thinking differently. Give it time and you will start seeing changes in your art. Um, it's, it's a delayed result, but the in your art, it's a delayed result. And the beautiful thing 
about, but in your mind, it's immediate. It's within a week or two, you start seeing things differently. So you have to start seeing things differently. You have to understand the value of discipline, sitting down and doing enough form studies so you can start seeing things differently. And then from there, you are upping your photo reference studies, upping your um, uh, anatomy studies, working on your brush strokes and edges. And again, that's where art really starts to change in your gallery. So for, you know, to answer the question, that student that's been at this for four years and to answer other questions that I've, that I've seen that my art isn't improving. Honestly, I don't see that question a lot because I'm Mr. Rack and I'm a good teacher. <laughs> I don't see my students coming to me and saying, hey, my art isn't improving. They always improve under me. But um, what I, what I, the question I do see is that I'm not, my skill isn't improving fast enough. And that's what I always answer is if it's not improving fast enough, you haven't changed enough about the way you think. You're still fighting some habits. And uh, to have drastic overnight changes in the way you think and the way you paint has to be overnight changes in the way you think, which isn't possible for the brain. Again, the brain takes a couple days just to figure out what you did three days ago. You know, your brain is still processing what you did three days ago. Did you know that? Like, they, you know, from traumas to shock to moments where you were laughing your ass off to jokes to to what you did yesterday to your fatigue to, to gossip you may have heard to, you know, anything, anything. Your brain is still figuring out what happened to you a couple of days ago. So you're, I get it's that immediate gratification thing that you have to keep fighting. Um, but between all of that, that's how you get good. That's how you get better. And uh, it'll start to show up in your work nine cylinders to go um so i don't mean like ten, not 10 cylinders you know in your life i mean it takes 10 cylinders to change the way you think i have never seen anybody like draw 50 cylinders and they still don't get the cylinder it just takes 10 to really understand the concept of what a cylinder does in open light and apply it in a portrait no you can't snap your instant your fineness instantly in via pro so here, you know, I applied basic light environment, basic anatomy, um, basic form, and a little bit of uh, fun here and there with um, cinema. And uh, we have space in the background, we have light, we have, it's, it's just a very simple background. Um, we have a bit more realism in the eyes. I got rid of that circle because it would just been a big circle. We have a bit more texture in the hair. You could, by all means, render the hair a little bit more, you know, um, than I did. Um, and there are other ways to do this. You don't have to go for the full silhouette. That's just me applying my creative uh, liberty here, but you could do something that um, shows a bit more of the face if you'd like um, uh, with, with, you know, within reason. So maybe it's some kind of uh, light, something I want to mess with, you know, maybe some kind of open doorway or something like that. This is just me noodling around. It's not really anything particular. And then when you do this type of change, you have to make sure that you are also raising the midtones because contrast wouldn't really sit in this scene at all that much. So you would lose some of that contrast in the eyes, the definition. So you don't have to just leave it as a dark piece. You could mess around with it a little bit more um, if you want to have fun. Uh, but uh, any questions at all before I let you guys go? And it, it, again, this wasn't about having fun, all right? This was about doing form studies so your work expands. Um, I could have stopped the critique just simply at the point where I rendered the face a little bit better. So you could scroll back and find that when I rendered the face a little bit. Um, but uh, but that's it. Any questions at all? Uh, thanks for class. But off topic, did you get your YouTube play button? No, I did not. I did. I was with COVID, and I and I was just I was not in. You know, I didn't have the mind to go begging them to give me one. I, I'm not even sure how you get one. You have a play button. How do you have a play button? Do you have a? Is your channel? Do you have a channel? Anyway, thank you everyone for coming today. 
Um, I hope today's talk inspired you to be to take your studies a little more seriously and not just about studying in high volumes, but studying efficiently. So studying the right things, studying the alphabet of art, which is geometry. Um, and, uh, and your work will improve uh, from there. Um, so uh, to submit your work for Critique Hour, go to istabrak.com and uh, click on the Reddit icon here. And uh, have a look through the Reddit. There's a lot of fun stuff. Um, and if you learn something today and you want to give back to the community, uh, you can join as a patron. And that's just $1 a month just to keep the community running. And that's, you know, if, if uh, everybody joins. Um, so it's an, you know, it's an insignificant amount. Um, but uh, it's still amazing if everybody uh, joins in on that amount. So it's a, it's it's a it's an amount that sticks around. It's an amount that promises longevity. It's not a significant amount uh, to pledge every month, and it keeps the community going. Portrait Studio is still on sale, uh, as well as my brushes. And look out for new products on my store if you guys are interested in tutorials. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.